All right, we're going to start off taking a look at some phase change diagrams, but we got to get a couple little definition-y things in here before we get started. The vapor pressure. That is the pressure exerted by a gas on the surface of a liquid in a closed container. Think like a two liter pop. at a specific temp. And we'll talk more once I get some of this down. Some number of particles are moving into the gas phase as liquid phase. Some particles of some number of particles are moving into the gas phase um, from liquid phase. I will say that. That doesn't sound right. From Liquid phase. Okay, so again, think of like having a two liter, and of course you can't see the gas, but the the cap's on, and you know that the, there's some pressure in there. You can feel it when you squeeze the bottle. There's some pressure in the gas. Now, if you were to heat that up, I don't recommend this, but if you were to heat that up, you would be pushing a an additional additional amount of the liquid particles into the gas phase so the bottle would feel like it has more pressure in it you would actually feel it and if you kept playing this game heating it up higher and higher and higher more and more particles would have enough energy to go into the gas phase but after a period of time once you get too many of those particles into the gas phase the bottle would explode not just the opposite you maybe you've done this before if it was capped and it got really cold, the bottle would actually kind of depressurize or squeeze in, if, if you will. Uh, it would kind of shrink in and um, you would see that effect on the bottle. So it kind of can go in both ways. But that is the vapor pressure that the particles are actually pressing down on the liquid phase. The sides too, but it's measured as a, as a being onto the liquid phase. Okay, we'll add a little more here. As the temp increases more particles have the kinetic energy to escape the liquid which I just kind of talked about so let's look at some phase diagrams here what is a phase diagram? Well, a phase diagram is a comparison between phases, go figure, phases, in regards to temperature and pressure. All right, let's do two different ones here. Um, we'll put H2O over here and we'll put CO2 over here. And we're gonna say as we add energy or raise the temperature, in comparison to the pressure. 
So if we're looking at water, it does something sort of like this. And then you get like a negative slope thing going on. Uh, this is a solid, this is a liquid phase, and this is a gas phase. And then something kind of similar going on with this, except we have a positive slope coming off this one. Solid, liquid, and gas. This one over here is much more common, but you're going to see for a variety of substances. Water is weird, the fact that we have this going on. Uh, let's make some points on here. So we have uh, this stage right here, and we'll call this spot there. And I'm just going to make a point. I'm going to call this 1 atm and 0 degrees Celsius. This happens to be the freezing point. And if we keep going over to here and bring this down, this would be the boiling point. Um, and so what we have is a kind of playing around with two different things, the temperature and the pressure. Uh, you can vary them. So for example, if you are in the mountains, Colorado, the having less pressure down in the, in the mountains, if you lower the pressure, as we take this line, drag it down, water would boil at a lower temperature right there. So when you, every point along this line here is the boiling point. Notice they're at different temperatures. It's a phase diagram. So this is what's called an equilibrium. The equilibrium between the liquid phase and the gas phase, or the boiling point. Now a couple of other uh, things that you probably have heard about before. This little point here is a very specific location at some temperature and pressure. It's called the triple point, in which you get all three phases going on at the same time. And the other phase, which is very um, particular, is this point here is called a critical point, and it happens at a very specific temperature. And what that is referring to is that this particular temperature, regardless how much more pressure you apply to this substance, you cannot force it back into a liquid phase. It's called a supercritical fluid. At that point, there's so much energy that the particles possess, they won't stick. So in other words, anything less than this temperature, I can force it into the liquid state. And you can kind of see this going through here. So for example, if I was right here and I'm in the gaseous state, I can add enough energy to force it, or excuse me, pressure to force it back into liquid state. Over here, no, doesn't happen. It's the end of the line right here. It stays in the gaseous phase. Um, and again, everything else uh, typically is gonna have this scenario here where if I'm in a liquid state and I apply pressure, I can force something into the solid state. Water is just the opposite. If you apply pressure to water from the solid state, you actually melt it. Think ice skates. Ice skates do that. And that's the end of that. Okay. Um, we're going to keep moving here a little bit, and then we'll finish this topic up in the last chapter. But we're going to talk about solids. So this whole conversation about liquids, done. I'll give a couple more definition-y kind of things, and we'll talk about solids, and then we'll go back and finish the problems up in the last video. Okay, solids. What about those? We're going to talk about all the general details with those. First one is metallic. So how metallic solids differ from the others is it is a network, a large arrangement of particles. held together by shared, here's the key, delocalized electrons. So it means the electrons are not bound to any particular atom, copper. The electrons are able to flow, which is why Electricity flows through metals. 
uh, the electrons are not fixed to a particular location. And we're talking about the valence electrons. So they can kind of bounce around from atom to atom. Other properties they have is they are generally have a high melting point. I'll put MP. They are good conductors. And, of course, they are malleable and ductile, of course. Okay, that's the end of uh, metals. We'll move on to the other ones in the next lecture.